That'll work a lot better if you get on the other side, probably. Mm -hmm. Sam, what's going on over there? Where? We just started wobbling. Or something. No, keep going, keep going. What's going on over there? Oh! We moved the block. Which means we moved. No, that didn't. That didn't go in. This had to climb over. This went out. Huh? This went out. Can't. It must have. No. No, I still got the same space in this one. I think. I think this caught the edge. And. Oh, that ain't gonna happen. You need to. You need to motivate it. Oh. Oh, you know what happened. Uh, it's a screw. It's pulling this down. Okay. <laughs> Give me a little more motivation then. Stay on these, not this. Because this isn't, this is just thrown together hack. Do you see any action happening on that holder? Like, is it trying to pull that? Here, I'm not seeing any changes for this stuff. Cool. My motor's so weak that if I put any real force on this. I think it's out of Oh, no, you're right. There's no the motor's got like a gear reduction on it and stuff. Wait, it loads up again? Yeah, you're about to be Is it? Yeah. Oh, it's good. Yep, belt slipping. Top of it, okay. I started this before I got this saw with the utility knife. Oh. Yeah. That sucks. We're pretty close. We're like really, really close. I feel like that always takes so much longer than you expect. Like, I don't know why. Because I don't have a proper cutoff tool in a real lathe. The good side is it'll be incredibly smooth and straight. You see the self-aligning bearings doing their doing their thing. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. You should get shot in that. Right, right there. Just doing a little chamois in there, grooving around, aligning itself, self-aligning as it were. So I don't know what's going to happen when we finally cut through, but I know it's going to be interesting. So how far is that plastic going in? So yeah, Maybe yeah. an inch? Three quarter inch? Hmm. I should probably make sure I'm not actually cutting the UHMW yet. Hey, I got an idea. If we take...
don't think you're through yet. No, but I'm through enough that if we take the wrench. Okay, now we are definitely clear of the thing. Um, just give me a strip of screw right now. I should be able to pry it off a little bit. Screw up the face of the coil. Can we pull that back a bit? It'll what? probably fall out oh, the, the thing. God! <laughs> there's, there's a fair bit of material left there. That's robust. I got an idea. I'll cut it a little more. Well, go, go your way. You can go my way as far as you want. All right. How about a little more? Shove it. Keep going right there. Oh, that's a TIT tight.
still see him smooth come flying out the other side. See, every time I do that, slow down, chuck, 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 I make a bunch of flat spots in it, and then right after I do this, you see a ton of stuff come out. I think I just created a new Skrillex track. <laughs> Needs more love love. It's really biting. I think that means I'm through. Or at least you're close enough to crushing what's left. Tension blade. That, that whole area here is pinched through. So I think that means I've cut it out and it's compressing against it. Yeah. Let's take it out. Yeah, it, it definitely gets a little warm. That should snap right on, or very nearly. Let's let's go to where it's together. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is the that is the closest spot. Oh, you know what? If we just start sawing our. our oh, way. hey, look inside! Oh, I'm okay. melting my way through the thin remains. Did you just start sawing your way around it now? Just regular? Yeah. Um, it goes crazy. I'll hold that. Okay, you got it? Alright. This is a stupid way to do this. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think once you poke through, yeah. You know, it's there you go. Okay. You want to just ride that? Yep. You got it? I want to say, let's take this off the thing, but doing that, we got to put it back on. Right. And it's just, uh, a little bit so yeah, come a come my way. I'm coming your way. Come my way all the way baby. Just keep on coming. I'm all right there. I got like an inch. Yeah? Okay. Be tight. Tighten your end down. Show you some mad master deburring skills. Huh? Hand it here. That was good. See, I got a bolt in there, so it's kind of tricky. But the next step is to sand the hell out of it. For which we stop, spin it the other way. Can't both sand. Should we drop down a speed? Sure, drop it down. Dropping down to speed doesn't help because it doesn't change our coefficient. In fact, it was definitely better at the higher speed. That's surprising. No, because it's not, it, it's slippage of the belt. Our coefficient, coefficient of friction of the belt doesn't change. Our mechanical advantage does, but our coefficient of friction doesn't. We just nudge this guy up a little bit.
I'm making way too much stuff that's probably pretty bad to breathe. I'm making a lot of stuff that's probably pretty bad to breathe. I got an idea. The same rain orbital sander with the vacuum that we use for the boats? Yep. We use that for this. Drywall tactic may also be a good one. Now I'm going to do it electrically. I may take it down to an 80 degree. But don't they have a 220 drywall paper? But they, I'm just talking about all the stuff that comes with the mesh. So the dust gets through. No, the, the grand orbital, it's got holes in it. It's got like a ring of, I don't know, eight or ten So we're not loading up the paper. No, no, you have to open the shot pack. And yeah. I could use one sheet of paper on this and do the whole thing done. Do it with an 80 grit, and we'll have great grip with the epoxy. Or with the polyurethane. Right. I'll spend more time hauling everything over here and setting it up than I will actually send it. But I'll do it tomorrow and uh, I'll send it tomorrow and I'll code it in the morning. The bitch is winding it because it's gonna take hours to do the wind because I got to do it slow to be because at eight inches my surface speed so fast uh -huh. that I got to turn the coil down really Hey Sam, mm. you know it'd be really boss mm. for this. If we took that motor over there with the gear drive and hooked it up to this. Doesn't that one have a speed control for it mm. already? Well, it's got a little computery thing that hooks to it that I'm pretty sure does some manner of speed control. Sure you got that where you want or do you want me to wedge your foot in there? What's that? Well, it's definitely tighter. Yeah. Clear. Well, our acceleration is going to get up significantly. Let's not try a piece of paper and see what happens. It's flying in here as far as it had been. And the super. I just dumped on epoxy way too thick. Um, there's overlap winds. It's just it was the first coil, and I just wanted to see how how many things could you screw up and still make a Tesla car that worked. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, this one came out really good. This this one I actually put effort into. Yeah. Cool. And I want to wind the eight, and then I want to wind that six. And one of these will be a portable demo in here. Or one of these will be a portable, one of these will be research in here, this will be research, um, that's going to be research. I want to build a portable rig um, similar to Groucho, same size stand, with one of these where the 6 inch coil slips into an 8 inch tube for storage and transport. You just pop the top off. You gotta get the uh, Department of uh, Water and Power going. That's, that's going to be the That thing to blow. Oh, then I'd be a candy raver. Oh, those are really sharp. Now I'm cool.
I think, that's, I think that's all we can accomplish for tonight. Cool. So, we'll come back tomorrow, rock it out. I can get that wound and coded tomorrow. I'll need a second to help, but I just need somebody to man the switch for when I yell, Dear God, turn it off! How slow is this guy go? Okay, which one you pull me slow? Okay, slow enough. Yeah, I, I think we took it all the way down to the first gear. I've never done a wind at first gear, but on big 8-inch you probably want to. Watch fingers. Oh, wait. Clear. Oh yeah, that's 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 definitely slow enough. God, that'll take a long time. Boom, 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 a thousand times. Boom, <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom. Oh God. This thing's definitely not wobbling us hard. Well, no, we got it at the end yeah. square now. The bearing is not it's moving at all in the mount. Yeah, it was really, really because there was. Yeah. We were we were in and out three eighths of an inch. But I'll sand this down. See, what we did is, Paul and I got well into a wind. Mm -hmm. Like, probably this far into a wind, about six, eight inches. And we, we coated it, because you sand it down, you coat it. And then you start to wind. And you finish your wind, and you coat it, and then you let it dry, and then you come back, and you coat it, and you coat it, and you coat it, and you do this like 15 times. Well, we did the first coat, we got into a wind, and then we had to stop for the board meeting. Mm -hmm. So we come back, it's two hours later, and it's it's not dry. Oh, it's got to be tacky and soft. And it was, yeah, and it was really, really bad. Like, it had, it had gummed up. So we tried to continue the wind, and I didn't have enough, there wasn't enough lubricity to it to be able to move and keep the windings closed. So we ended up having to scrap the wind. Yeah. And I just... I took the end and I started marching mm -hmm. from here out the door by CNC, which is a straight shot. Oh, wow. Okay. Now that's an exterior wall mm -hmm. all the way to the dog yard. That's a city block. Mm -hmm. I wrapped around the fence post and headed down the street. I got past Yosef's house and like three doors down. Oh, shit. And, and then I, I ran out of water. Huh? That's a lot of wire. That's a lot of wire. And understand, it's an eight inch coil that we're winding with only 22 gauge. Mm -hmm. Usually you go up the size. At, at eight inches, I like to go about 18. Um, so yeah, at 10 inches, I go to about a 16. At 12 inches, I'm at about 14 or 12, depending. Gonna have so many lines on that. At, at 22 gauge, because that's all the wire I got is 22 gauge, this is gonna be a really high turn count. I'll probably get I don't know, figure, it's an 8-inch coil. Does it give you a higher output voltage and more turns? Dude, people have written theses. I know that. So um, quick, quick and dirty. It depends a lot on who you ask and whose theory you bring. So what I want to be able to do here in this lab is do actual output voltage measurements. I want to be able to do actual output current measurements. I, nobody does this. It's all, it's some really well-educated guesses, but nobody's ever like actually done it. There's been waveforms, there's been, there's some people have done measurements on stuff, but only on giant points. Like there's real data on Electrum and the 13M, like these guys went at it for real. But I wanna, I wanna do stuff at this level, I wanna be making actual output measurements of voltage, amperage, power, all that at the 3 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch right. coils. And that's why we're, we're getting set up, like we're, we're on our way. The electricians will have the main power feed done end of next week, and then it's over to us and we can start setting up the big bearing stack and stuff like that and just start getting, like... The peripheral stuff. We're, yeah, we're, gonna, we're, we're getting all the ancillary, the boring stuff set up. Right. Um, like, I want to get that going again. We haven't gotten the big black tank power supply running in years since that thing's run. Mm -hmm. And I want to get that going with the big electrostatic pendulum. I want to get, I want to do foam rights again. We haven't done that foam rights in a while. We got some goodies in. Come here, check this out. 
I see some more goodies. Yeah, some I goodies. have seen goodies. Another one. There's more goodies. We got some nice insulators in, and we'll just we'll make some nice stands to mount these on, and we can do cool stuff with these. I got to get the top pieces. We only got one saddle, so that'll be cool. And we got three of these. My grandfather was a lineman, okay, and when I was a little boy, for pretty much my entire childhood, there was one of these that sat on a wall in their backyard, they had a, a little garden wall, and it was a bird feeder. Mm. My entire childhood, he had one of the, and he just kept bird seed in it, and you know, it was, it was a bird feeder. I didn't know what it was. And I was fully into my teens before I realized that he'd had it upside down, and it was an insulator. Mm -hmm. And the wire lays through here, and then there's a wrap of wire around here. This one is junk. We're going to throw it away because it's broken. And that is the sharpest edge, man. Broken ceramic is the sharpest edge you'll ever see. And somebody will grab this and I'll get stitches instantly. So, What's, uh, this one's good, though. An insulator that size rated for? This one doesn't say, but off the top of my head, I'd say probably 12 kilovolts. For outdoor use. Right. In here, this would hold off 20, 30, 40 kilometers. Right, because we don't have to worry about moisture. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing this outside in driving rain and all that. Um, but yeah, those are probably good for 12 kilovolts outside. Inside, I'd have no problem using those at 20 kilovolts. No problem at all. Um, something like this, out in the real world, what do you say? It says it was made in 99 by SED. Three quarter inch. 14R. Don't have rain. 11X45F. Uh, this probably out in the real world, 40 kilovolts or so, maybe a little more. Somewhere around 40, 50, I guess. In here, this would easily withstand 100 kilovolts, no problem. If you clean it up good, it's got, you know, it's got dusty and schmooky, but this, this would take 100 kilovolts in here. So you could use this with the, the um, fulgurites and with the lifter. This would work really well as a lifter. There. Speaking of which, after the last lifter was destroyed, another set got made? What? Remember, we were here the one night Taking apart that x ray transformer. Yeah. I don't recall her name. She walked inside the cones, took it out. Yeah. There we go. They'll find her body somewhere in the woods. If I could laser cut panels. So instead of doing the balsa, if really, really light. I got light a whole new wood, idea in lifters. I got a whole new idea in lifters, nice and it's, it's materials you and I are familiar with. Triangular. People have been making lifters, lifters out of balsa for years. Right. Carbon fiber. It's conductive. It is. But the whole bottom it's main frame of the lifter conductive. can be conductive. It's wrapped right. in aluminum foil. Around, you have three vertical posts that we use polystyrene yeah. for the vertical posts which is an insulator. Mm -hmm. And then the top, we just use a hair thin wire. Right. But I think we can make lifters out of carbon fiber. So we gotta find the best carbon fiber glue. And I've already found carbon fiber tubing that's just wicked tiny. I got thinking about looking at the tail on a, um, a nano, blade right. nano, CPX. So, and it's gotta be similar in weight to balsa and a million times stronger. Right. And I have over here, and we're going to see and see one because this was done in 2003 or so before we had CNC capability. I did this as a layup of individual panels. Yeah. And it's just a sheet of acrylic with a layup of, these are just scrap pieces of acrylic we had laying around. 
and the idea was to have channels with holes and you lay in your balsa and then it's a jig for holding it up for gluing. And it works really well. We made, we made lifters the size. And this is designed to be modular, so you could, you could make a whole circle. I wonder if we could make nice little corner brackets for that. Carbon fiber? 3D printer? And, I am not, totally okay and not have to worry about setting up your corners real carefully, just stick it in, stick it in, Try dab it. a glue, forget it. Sounds like a really good project for this weekend. I'll draw that up right quick. Do it. We just got we don't have any carbon fiber shaft. What if we can buy it locally at a hobby shop or something? I know that I know McMaster sells it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's Friday. If it's McMaster, it's going to cost a fortune. No, I found places online sell cheap, okay. like a buck or two a piece. And so we can get it. We won't have it this weekend, though. But we might be able to get something from, there's, there's Riders on 28th. You can check co uh, Cobblestone tomorrow morning. Check Cobblestone, because all we need is the skinniest carbon fiber tube to do. Yeah. So, all right. You guys have fun. That's today's Captain's Blog.